Mesh grids. To the person new to this, this can be a confusing concept, but this is well worth your time to learn. When it comes to building geometries into arrays, this is a huge, huge tool that makes some very complicated things very easy. It is well worth your time to learn this. So step one here, we have some kind of grid in mind and we want to define this somewhere in our code. And just to put something down, I created a grid that was seven cells wide. It was five cells tall. The cell spacing was one because I thought that was convenient. And I defined some positions for each of these cells along the X axis and the Y axis, just a simple grid. The next thing we'll want to do is create what I call axis vectors. And that's my word. That's I don't know if that's an industry standard thing, but that's what I call them. But they're just arrays that contain in them the center position of each cell in the grid. And so we had in mind we wanted these to be the positions of each of the cells along the X axis. So up here I create an array that actually contains those numbers and then I'll do the same thing for the y-axis and that's pretty simple the first thing i'll do is i'll create an array that starts at 0 0.5 and goes all the way up to total number of points minus 0 0.5 so inside these square brackets we have an array that goes 0 0.5 1.5 2.5 3.5 all the way up and so then if i multiply that by the cell spacing I will get an array that contains the center positions along the horizontal axis. And I'm doing the exact same thing for the Y axis. So I call those two my axis vectors. And also anytime I want to plot my array to a figure window, I will give that plot command my XA and YA, and then it scales everything correctly and can label the axes automatically. And so that becomes very nice as well. And then the last step here really is to calculate the mesh grid and MATLAB has this built in command mesh grid. Now, just to remind you, we are dealing with arrays and not matrices. And so our sense of X and Y is swapped compared to how MATLAB is inherently handling things. So we do one thing here that's a little bit different. We're giving it Y first and then X. And that is for the both input arguments and the output arguments of this strange mesh grid command. So we're giving it two one dimensional arrays and outcome two two dimensional arrays. And each of these will be the size of our grid. And so now the question is, well, what the heck are those things? Let's look at them. Here is X. So X is a two dimensional array. It's the size of the grid that we're interested in. And look at the numbers in this array X. Each of these numbers contains that cell's position in X. And that's why we see the same numbers in each of the columns. So this whole row of cells, their center position is 3.5. So it contains 3.5s. And of course, those numbers will be increasing left to right, assuming that's how we defined our XA vector. So there is a lot of redundant information in X. We might think that's kind of silly, but hold on because this does become very useful. What is Y? Well, it's the same thing, but now the array contains the position of each cell in the Y direction. So if we go ahead and we look at, uh, let's take the second cell. So all of the, the cells, the second cell down, their center position is 1.5. So the number value stored in each of these is 1.5. And that's also why we get the same number going all the way across. And so then these numbers increase going downward. Again, a lot of redundant information. We might think that's silly. There's probably a more efficient way to do things. And there probably is a more efficient way to do things. But with these two arrays in mind, X and Y, some things become really easy. Let's get into that with an example. So ultimately what we're leading up to is let's create a circle. So the first thing we'll do is create what I call a radial grid. And so what's the equation for radius? In this case, radius squared. Well, it's X squared plus Y squared equals radius squared. So when we use mesh grid, we can literally just type in that equation. Now I'm using a dot 
caret second or dot to the second. And if we were just to say X to the second, it's doing X times X and it will do those as matrices. So it's doing row column operations and we'll get a completely different answer than what we're expecting. What we wanna do is just square each element in the array X. So we're doing an array operation, not a matrix operation. That's why the dot is there. The same thing for Y. So X squared plus Y squared gives us radius squared. That's a radial grid. And if we look at that, we can see that, yeah, we sort of have this radial pattern. We can kind of see these, these circular contours if we look at the colors through this grid. And that's exactly what happens. Now we might ask, why am I calculating radius squared and not radius? I absolutely could take the square root of this and then I would have exactly a radial grid. Uh, it would be radius exactly. And the reason I don't do that is because we would be calculating the square root of every single number here. And we actually don't need that. Um, we can just compare this to a single scalar radius squared and we'll see that in the next step. So it's just an operation that does not have to happen. It's not such a big deal for arrays this size, but realistically you'll be dealing with arrays that are maybe thousand by thousand points. And that's a lot of numbers and a lot of calculations we don't have to do. So I just tend to leave this as radius squared and that's why I'm calling it RSQ. And sometimes in my codes, I get lazy and still just call this R, even though technically it's R squared, but I'm using RSQ because well, I'm in front of a lot of people here and I wanna do things a little more correctly than uh, what I do in my own lazy life, I guess. Okay, let's go on to the next step where we actually create the circle. And so this is what I was talking about with the radius squared. I can take this radial grid, which is a whole bunch of radiuses squared, and just compare them to this little single number radius squared. So I am only doing one square operation instead of having to do you know many thousands of square root operations. So I always leave my radial grids squared for that reason. So this is doing a little Boolean operation. And what I get is zeros and ones. And I will get ones everywhere on this grid that that radius squared is less than some little scalar radius squared and zeros everywhere else. And we look what that looks like. Um, here's this, this circular contour. That's about where my, my little R would be. And I'm getting ones inside of that and zeros outside. And we're not seeing a circle centered because the center of our grid, the, the origin somewhere right around here. Uh, now we could just shift the positions of our X and Y axis vectors. If we put the origin at the middle, yeah, we would actually see a circle. So that made creating a circle extremely easy. And there's a whole bunch of shapes, circles, ellipses, and lines, and many, many other things that we can do with this mesh grid command. And you'll see that in the following sequence of videos. We will finish up just with some quick examples of some different mesh grids and what they can do. We've already talked about a linear mesh grid and here's some things that it can do. Well, rectangles and here's even an offset rectangles. We can make bars and crosses. We can enter equations for lines and do fills above or below those lines. And we can also do kind of thick lines in any sort of direction. So geometries that are sort of Cartesian-ish, we can do with linear mesh grids. There's radial mesh grids, which we actually did an example of. And we do the X squared plus Y squared trick to get a grid that you know, maybe starts at zero at some place and increases with radius away from that point. In this case, I have it centered. And so, well, radial grids are used for making circles. In this case, we can even offset the circle. We can control its radius. And more generally, we can make ellipses. We can control the radius uh, left and right, up and down, and of course, still control its positions. Maybe we have sort of rings and other structures like that. This is all done with radial mesh grids. And the last one I'll show is an azimuthal mesh grid. Here, we're calculating the inverse tangent of y and x. So essentially, it's the angle of the linear mesh grid x and y. Now, why on earth would we want to do that? Perhaps we'd like to create wedges or staircase patterns or even a Pac-Man. Now, this is actually a combination of a radial grid and an azimuthal grid. So we'll use the radial grid to make the circle as muthal grid to make the wedge, which is the mouth of the Pac-Man. And then we just subtracted that wedge from the Pac-Man. And of course there's hybrids of these, there's more, there's an infinite number, whatever your imagination can come up with.
And so that is why this mesh grid command is immensely useful and it's your probably your most powerful tool for building geometries into arrays.